I would like to thank everyone for joining and setting aside your busy teaching and planning schedules uh, to focus on this training. And we don't take that for granted. We really do appreciate. Briefly, our program comes against the backdrop of uh, COVID-19. And our main objective is to ensure that despite the harsh and negative effects of COVID-19, learning must not end. So we as UNESCO, we continue to search for alternative pathways of learning and strategies to guarantee learning in this difficult time. Especially taking cognizance of the fact that uh, learners lost a year without learning. And our intervention at UNESCO is a teacher professional development initiative, which is focused on equipping teachers with skills to provide distance or online learning and mitigate the, the effects of um, school closures. And module 2B is special to us because it equips teachers to be creative and resourceful as they develop their open education resources. And as you know, there's a serious shortage of online resources which are addressing the needs of the competence-based curriculum. And I'm quite confident that this training is going to equip you with the right skills to develop um, resources. And I wish you a fruitful and engaging experience in this module. And please participate actively and engage with the content. And uh, as I end, uh, Andrew, perhaps there is one director from MOPSE. If there's a director, I think he can say a few words. All right. If, if for some reason you can't uh, uh, be heard because you're muted, then just let us know and then we will give you an opportunity to address everyone. All right. So um, from my perspective, thank you very much, Lovemore, and uh, thank you, UNESCO, for this initiative. My name is Andrew Moore. I work for a consultancy here in Johannesburg. We're called Neil Butcher and Associates. And for many years now, we've been working with UNESCO, World Bank, um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, et cetera, um, working on that intersection between technology and education. And um, so we, we feel very fortunate that for many years now, we've been able to play in this space. So I'm hoping over the course of this week, I'll be able to impart some of my experience uh, to you to try and help you get up to speed with developing learning materials using open educational resources. Um, especially in the developing world, we feel that OER uh, is an important um, is an important piece of weapon or weaponry in your arm in your armory um it's um it, you can get access to quality materials and you can reorganize them to suit your particular teaching context so we're going to look at that in some detail but um i think first of all we need to just work out who you are all right so i did ask you to look uh, to fill in the questionnaire and the vast majority of you did so let's have a look at the little results all right, here's my results of the questionnaire. I'm trying to understand who are the people in group two. All right, and um, so if we have a look, here's all your, all your email addresses, so cool. And the first real question was, where in Zimbabwe are you? All right, so I was very fortunate two years ago, 2019, I got an opportunity to go around. Uh, we um, did some work in uh, Bulawayo, in Mashvingo, in Mutari, and finally in Harare. And there was another opportunity. I even ended up in Gweru. So I kind of feel I know Zimbabwe a little bit, enough to be dangerous anyway. So that's why I asked this question. I wanted to know where you come from. And you can see there's quite a spread of you guys all across the country, um, uh, uh, pretty evenly cut up. Or maybe Harare's got the lion's share, but not by much. So that's nice to see where you come from. All right, so cool. I was having a look. Bulawayo, Mutari, Harare, and my finger. Those are the four places I went to. So maybe you've met me before. <laughs> Shame. 
Uh, right. And then I asked, where do you do your teaching? I mean, at what level? So um, there was some ECD. You've got five people. You've got 24 in the primary area, which is the biggest group by far. We have 12 in the secondary. And we even got some representation of people who work in higher education. So that's nice. We had a nice spread. So the discussion should be interesting. Um, then we asked you to um, rate your ICT proficiency using a word processor. So why did I do these questions? I wanted to kind of understand how far I can push you. What do you already know? And how can we go to the next level? So my first question was just basic, can you use a word processor? And I'm very excited to see that the vast majority up in the fours and the fives, uh, and even there's no one at one. So I'm feeling, okay, so not everyone is an expert, but you're mostly moving into that direction. So that's very exciting. And then I said, what about Zoom? Zoom is becoming the new education app of preference used exceptionally badly, I must point out, uh, across the world. Um, people just think they can just continue like they used to. Yeah, blah, 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 without actually engaging with anyone. So um, I asked how many people are used to facilitating a Zoom lecture? And here the spreads kind of cross the board. We've got people who are absolutely new to this game. And we've got uh, two people who consider themselves experts. Um, we've, but uh, we've got quite a nice chunk at three and four. Um, we've got 25 people in this group who feel, yeah, they, they, they can handle Zoom. So good, that's, that's encouraging. Rate your proficiency at using the internet. Now you're going to find that the internet is going to be a very important component of the training to, uh, this week. So we wanted to understand how are your skills, and I can rest assured here, all of you feeling relatively comfortable moving around the internet and using the various search engines. We are going to take you to the next level in terms of the search. We're going to use the advanced search. We're going to show you how to uh, really drill down to find exactly what you want in terms of the curriculum resources. The phones are becoming ubiquitous. Everyone has got a phone and there's no reason why you as a teacher shouldn't start exploiting the phones. Even though kids, a lot of them now have got access to phones, especially urban kids. But if you're in a rural area, you'll notice over the next few years that the prevalence of phones becomes more and more marked. Um, so we said, how, how many of you are starting to use phone apps? And this is also a bit exciting. We've got three, four, and five, well represented, no one at one. So this is the trend that's happening now. Is we're moving away from the PCs and the laptops and the tablets, and we're moving more to organizing learning to take place on the phones. All right, and you'll see that the apps, oh, the, the four tutorials we've prepared for you all work beautifully on the phone. They're designed for the phone. All right, so um, hopefully you'll see it in action. Uh, then we asked you to say, well, what is your access to a digital device? Do you have one of these digital devices? And again, I don't have to worry, you're looking good. And to connectivity, I know UNESCO is helping subsidize some of the data. So that's also looking good. All right, nice. And then we said, for me, it's interesting. I wanna know, in your mind, do you feel you're struggling for teaching resources or do you feel you have sufficient? And it's interesting. No one said that they're overwhelmed with lots and lots. Well, actually one person did. Um, three and four are saying, no, I'm okay. All right, so that's interesting. So what I can say then is what we're gonna do this week then for those people in those two groups, three and four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and encourage you to share your quality resources with the rest of the country and potentially the world. All right, so we, we're going to then see if, okay, if, if you feel you've got enough resources, then can you share some of your best stuff with other people? All right, so keep that in mind. And then I asked you, um, uh, with all this lockdown in South Africa, the teachers are pulling their hair out because they've all been forced to, to go into this remote teaching and half of them don't know what they're doing. And it's like, to be honest, it's a bit of a disaster. All right. Um, and so I wanted to know, where do you fit in this? Are you quite happy to uh, go back to face-to-face -to -face, or are you quite happy to continue the rest of your life as a remote teacher? And it's quite interesting. You know, this, this group is skewed just slightly to the technology. So you're not scared of the technology. 
you would don't mind integrating ICT into the way that teachers teach and learners learn. Um, so I'm feeling a little encouraged there because my message is going to be very much about let's use technology appropriately in order to set up uh, quality teaching and quality learning. So that's nice. And then I asked you, if you had the opportunity, would you try and just cut out all technology? No one went for that route. Or would you use technology 24-7? And four of you went that route. But I think this group has got a healthy middle. Well, it's still slightly skewed to technology, but you can see there three and four is looking good. All right. Um, then I asked, I like technology that is tried and tested. Or do you like your technology that is the latest, coolest apps? All right. And again, the sweet spot's in the middle. But uh, we got to skew towards technology again here. So that's perhaps uh, understandable. Um, I'd like to argue that you've got to, um, yes, keep up to date with the latest and coolest stuff. But you also need to be um, uh, make sure the learning gets done. All right. So sometimes you just need to use things you know work rather than keep trying new things. Uh, and then I said, tell me what motivates you to teach. Why do you get up in the morning? Let's have a look at some of these. Passion <laughs> and economic reasons. Okay, because <laughs> someone's got to be paid at the end of the month. Just the idea of imparting knowledge to the little ones is enough. To inculcate values in children that motivates them to learn both intrinsically and extrinsically. Very nice. That's good. I was born a teacher by nature. I like to impact knowledge to others. Nice. To deliver lessons that transform children. I love interacting with my students, helping them in exploring the world of learning and technology. To impart good values. To introduce new ideas. I love teaching and I also learn more myself. Nice. When my learners achieved all the objectives given on every task, then I feel satisfied. All right. Uh, I feel that knowledge is power and imparting it to young souls is even more powerful. My goal is to empower learners with knowledge and skills essential in their lifelong careers. Nice. All right. And it, they, we're getting some recurring trends, which is great. I'm going to just jump down the bottom. To see children I teach acquire and apply skills and knowledge, I impart to them in a well-balanced, independent, appropriate, and productive way. I enjoy being with young learners. The love of my country. Look at that one. All right. In many ways, we're investing in the country's future. All right. So that's also very noble. Um. Oh, look at this one, because most of the work is done online. Here's the first person who's trumpeting technology. Okay, cool. Uh, I have children at heart. I like children. I love being a teacher, and it's my passion. All right, so I think this group's very grounded. I think you're, you're here because you love, you love the vocation, you love the kids, and you seem to love the technology. So I think you're in, a, in the right space for the next few days. All right. So uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Module 2B. And hopefully you're going to find it super practical and, uh, and you'll benefit by uh, going through the materials and actually then creating your own one. All right. So thank you, people. That was very useful. I'll go and see who said what later on when I've got a bit of time. Let's go back here. All right, hopefully you've seen my video. That was my propaganda video. So hopefully you know a little bit about me now and what we're going to cover. But I am going to go through the training agenda. So let me just open it up. Can you see the, the, um, the PDF on the screen? Is it still showing? I hope so. All right. All right, so what are we going to be doing this week? So you've got five days um, to work through four tutorials and then, then to put together a little assignment. All right, so, um, what, so what are the tutorials? The first one is what are OER? What are the benefits? And then how do we know something is open if we were to go online and look for it? 
what is Creative Commons licensing? So we're going to spend this evening and a bit of tomorrow going through that tutorial. I'm not going to lecture. I need to make that very clear. If you're going to sit in this group and expect someone to tell you stuff, then you're in the wrong place, all right? So the idea is I've prepared for multimedia with a little bit of interactivity uh, in them. And the idea is you have to find an hour tonight or tomorrow morning to work your way through the tutorials. All right, so one, one a day for the first four days. All right, so an hour every day somewhere, you've got to find the time to do that. So some people in group one said, oh, but I teach in the morning. Well, we know that. That's why we're meeting at two o'clock. And uh, therefore, it means you're going to have to find some time before you start teaching tomorrow morning. So keep that in mind. You have to find the space in your daily schedule to put in four hours of study, one hour a day. All right. So keep that in mind. The first tutorial is what are OERs. The second tutorial is how can you find them? All right. So the problem with OERs is they're all over the place. There's no one-stop shop for curriculum OERs. So as you are looking for OERs to support your teaching subject, then you've got to know how to find them. All right. So we're going to show you how to do that. It's not rocket science, but it is a little trick, and you're going to have to work through your tutorial to find out. Okay. Tutorial number three is how, how can you adapt them to better suit your curriculum? And two, how can you create them from scratch so that they are openly licensed resources? All right. So the third one is about the adaptation, about creating new ones, about licensing. How do you license your resource? And then the final one, tutorial four, is on how can you share them? All right, so you've gone to all this trouble to uh, prepare quality OER, and now you want to share them. You want to share them with your, your colleagues in Zimbabwe. You want to share them with colleagues around the world. How do you do that? How do you get it out there? All right, so we will look at two repositories. We will look at EduConnect, which is the ministry's OER repository and we're also going to look at oer commons which is a global repository and we'll show you how to put your stuff on those two portals and then on the last day is the show and tell so we would like you to start putting together uh, a a resource or two we want you to have two resources that you can share with the world all right so there's got to be quality it's got to be something that you're proud of. I'm assuming you've probably already made it. Half of you are techies. Well, not techies, but technically inclined. And um, therefore, I'm sure you've fiddled with things in the past and you've got stuff that you could share immediately. Um, when I ran this workshop in 2019 face-to-face, -face, I was blown away by the creativity of the people in my workshops. All right. They all came up with some amazing things. Uh, we had people in PowerPoint using the audio uh, to help with pronunciation. We had people doing little video clips um, using their phones to demonstrate various little um, science uh, experiments, etc. cetera. Um, we had uh, a, a little animation. So I, I was blown away. And um, I don't see why this group uh, is not going to knock my socks off again. All right. So uh, on the fifth day, then, we want you to show the OER that you have prepared. And there are some criteria that we want to um, make sure are met. All right. So keep this in mind. I'm telling you right up front. So in your mind, as you're going through the tutorials and you're looking at all the resources that are available um, uh, to you, you can be thinking, all oh, right, so which OERs am I going to submit for the final assignment? Okay. So if I have a look, uh, there's module assignment. Um, we are wanting you to upload two resources into the Zimbabwean EduConnect database. All right. So they can be anything. They can be videos. They can be PowerPoints. They can be um, in, uh, 
word processor documents. Uh, they, they, they can be absolutely anything that's digital. All right. So uh, those things can be then added to the, the database. So how are we going to mark them? All right. So we can't mark them for the curriculum, um, uh, how good they are at teaching the curriculum, because some of your subjects, I have no idea. All right. I'm not your subject expert. I am an education person and I'm a technology person. So I can check it on these levels. So I'm going to be looking at four things. First of all, is there evidence that you have adapted or created to new, and they're going to be quality or if they're crappy, oh, I can't say that. If they're not of a professional standard, then um, you won't get all the marks. All right. So I, my first job is to see, is there evidence that there are these two resources? Uh, two, is somewhere on those resources, is it clearly stated how it is aligned to the Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education's curriculum statements? So I want you to go look at your subject syllabus document and actually draw from it what are the specific outcomes or what is the outcome or objective I think you guys use. So what is the objective that this resource helps you achieve? All right, so somewhere on the resource, I need a little reference of where this connects to the MOPSI curriculum statement. Uh, and I'll show you how to go find them if you don't know where they are. We, that's in two, and in tutorial two, we'll show you how to go find your curriculum statements. Uh, three, have you added a little Creative Commons license plate? And do you understand what the license plate tells you. So obviously you've got to learn a little bit about Creative Commons. You've got to make a selection and then you've got to generate it and then paste it onto your document. So that's the third criteria we're looking for. And then we want to see, is there evidence that is actually in the database? All right, so is it somewhere where um, we can uh, see evidence of you having successfully uploaded it into the OER repository. So yeah, that's the fourth one. Okay, it's out of 10. Um, and we've got a little bit of room to maneuver there. Um, but yeah, basically, we're going to use that rubric to mark your final assignment. So if you want the little certificate for module 2b, there's a big certificate for the whole thing. But there's a special special, <laughs> superior, no, it's not superior, it's smaller. But anyway, there's a special one for module 2B, all right, which I will hand out and I can sign because I am wearing my OER hat and therefore I'm going to say you have made a contribution to the OER, the world's OER repositories. Okay, so keep that in mind then, that is the assignment. Uh, there's a little, in this doc document that I handed out on Thursday night, uh, it's in the WhatsApp. Uh, it explains a little bit more about what we're looking for when we mark your, your contribution. Uh, in terms of the methodology that we are going to be doing, keep in mind that we are going to meet every day at two o'clock for 45 minutes, but the main learning takes place in the tutorials. Okay, now the tutorials I will post into the WhatsApp. Um, but you can always get them on this page. So um, I'll, I'll put that, there's a link with all the resources in one, on one page if you want. So you can do that. However, if you have any problems, concerns, frustrations, then you must express them in your group two chat, our WhatsApp group. So I'm keeping an eye on the WhatsApp. Um, sometimes it's uh, your colleagues already know the answer and then they can sort you out immediately. I look every now and then, love more checks every now and then. And um, if there is a recurring problem, we can address it immediately. So the WhatsApp is very good for quick, sharp communication. Uh, the Zoom is good for interactions because I'm going to ask you to contribute in a minute. And uh, those tutorials are your main learning device. Okay, they are multimedia uh, tutorials and um, and you've got to engage with them deeply. All right, so here's the agenda. It's what I've told you, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but if you want to see it, there it is. How many minutes? Oh, notice, this might be interesting. 
Where is it? Oh, I've lost it. But it says the whole thing, if you add it all up, all the training that is required, the Zoom meetings and the tutorials and blah, 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 and working on the assignment, etc., should take you about eight hours in total. So it's quite a lot of work this week. So don't think you're going to sit here and let the lecturer wash over you because it doesn't work like that. All right. You'll come unstuck almost immediately. All right. So you have to find the time to work through the tutorials. Okay. So let's just have a look at the tutorials. There they are. All right. So here's that link. Let me also put it in the WhatsApp group. So then you can get to it quickly. Let me just stick it in the WhatsApp group, make sure I'm in the right group. All right, I've pasted it in the WhatsApp group, and I can paste it in the Zoom group as well if you want. Um, Zoom's also got a chat, so let me just go to the chat. I'll put it in there too to everyone. All right, so the link I've just put in the WhatsApp and in the Zoom uh, chat uh, is the one-stop shop for all your learning resources, okay? And also, we're going to put the, the videos of, um, of these sessions. So if you found that your connection was bad um, or you came in late and you missed the first part or you had to leave early or your connection crashed or whatever, there is a recording of every session and we will put them on this page as well. So you can go find your 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 recordings now beware group one's already gone ahead so there's are up um so you don't want to get the wrong one i was you say i don't remember that because they're not all exactly the same all right so keep that in mind then that link will take you to this page and you can see you've got the introduction you've got the zoom the zoom recordings um and then you've got the tutorials here these four these are key you got to find the time. I keep saying this because group one only caught on towards the end of the week and then they were in trouble. They were scampering around trying to find time to work through them properly because you have to go through them carefully. All right, so let's have a look at one of them. Here they are. Uh, and you can see it gives a, a little breakdown. Start the course. And if you're doing this on your phone, they are beautiful. It's beautiful. It works so nice on your smartphones. All right. So you don't have to have a big screen. It's all worked out. And it all works nicely on the phone. All right. And blah, 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 blah. Here's the objectives. Move on to the next one. What are open educational resources? And there's some definitions. There's some benefits. There's some videos. Education is vital. Oh, yeah, like a lecker, so you don't have to read everything. You can look at the videos. And here are the um, uh, some more points. Another video. So we try to make it so that it's not all reading, reading, reading. There's uh, videos and there are some quizzes and there are some um, little exercises uh, in here. So, yeah, there's plenty to do but you have to find the time to go through them. All right. And they have to be in the right order. You have to go one, two, three, and four. All right. So keep that in mind then. Um, that's number one. And uh, number two, same format. All right. Start the course. On this side is all the, on the left-hand side is, is like a, uh, index on your phone you won't see that it'll look like this on your phone but you just push the hamburger and it'll give you the index all right uh, same idea there's some objectives and then you go into the content all right uh, this one for example is how do you find your your curriculum statements your syllabus all right so we show you how to find it if it's on EduConnect and then we also have a look at um downloading it from the mopsy official website all right so if you don't succeed at the first one you must look at the next one okay and there's little tutorials in here about how to do everything so for example right in order to do a proper search for oers we need to consult first 
the curriculum documents, uh, particularly the syllabi, uh, and identify blah, 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 that guy, you know, hey? Shucks, that voice sends you to sleep. Uh, anyway, so um, you've got to go through these things and work it out. And they all work like that. So there's one, two, three, and four. So for tonight, you have to finish number one. All right. So uh, tomorrow morning, I'll be in the WhatsApp. I'll be asking you questions. Um, I know you might be teaching, so it's not compulsory, but you can keep an eye on it uh, during your coffee break tomorrow uh, while you're uh, your teaching day is progressing, but come for uh, sorry fourteen hundred hours, two o'clock. Then I will have a test for you. There will be a test waiting for uh, you when you arrive. So I'm assuming you've done your work, that you've gone through the tutorial, that you've had to think about it, that you've done the little interactive activities and the quizzes and whatever, whatever you've discussed with me in the morning. And so when it comes to two o'clock tomorrow, you are ready for the test. All right, so keep that in mind. Okay, all right, enough of that. All right, I, what I will do though, is I'm gonna give you tutorial one, just tutorial one in the WhatsApp and in the in the Zoom. All right, now there's no excuses. Oh, I couldn't find it. That's no good, it won't work out. You need to, whoops, a daisy. You group two, make sure I'm in the right place. All right, so by two o'clock tomorrow, this first tutorial needs to be done. All right, you need to be an expert on what are OERs, why they are beneficial, and how you know, because of the open license, uh, that they are OERs. All right. So please, keep, I keep saying it because the group last week, they, they woke up so late that that is the key piece to the, all the training. All right. There are no lectures. There's going to be no lectures. So you have to do your tutorials. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to the chats now. Uh, in the chat, can you ask any questions? Uh, so in the Zoom chat, can you um, click on the chat button? Uh, you've got like this black strip on mine. It's a black strip and then there's mute video participants and there's one called chat. All right, so can you click on the chat? And, oh, hang on. I sent that link to the wrong person. Give me a second. We'll try again. Okay, so in the chat, um, can you call it up in the Zoom and I'll, uh, ask me a question? Let's see. You can ask me questions. It can be anything. Do you feel you're on top of this or is this all a bit scary? How do you feel? So you can, in your chat, you can all tell me, I feel confident. I feel terrified. I feel, tell me how you feel. So everyone, tell me something in the chat, in the Zoom chat. Right, let me just drag this onto the screen so you can see it. All right, so look for this bar if you're on a PC or a laptop and you're looking for this button here. The chat button. Okay, Sydney's told me, oh, uh, Chinyepi says, I feel great, that's very positive. Uh, uh, Sydney says he's great. Uh, Leon is saying my confidence is growing. You're a star. Okay, he knows how to snoop up to the lecturers because he, then he gets more marks. Okay, it works. It works. Um, uh, okay, well, Joyce, they're, they're coming thick and fast now. Joyce, confident. Christina, I'm enjoying the lesson. All right, cool. Uh, Chipo, feeling wonderful. Div Divani Ronald, great stuff. And I've got mm, Gonit, whoops, keeps moving. Gonit Zashi says, I feel ready to start creating OERs. That's the right spirit. Gladys, good. Tandiwe, I feel good. I Ital, Itai, Itai, he's, that person is also feeling great. 
I feel confident and raring to go, says Temba. All right. So generally, these are positive. All right. So I'm hoping it's all clear what needs to be done. And um, yeah. This time I went on and on a bit about making sure you do the tutorials because as I told you, the last group oh, it was a bit, bit of a wobbly. We nearly came unstuck. Uh, we've got Alfreda feeling good. All right. However, if you are feeling, if you are feeling sensitive, if you are feeling a little anxious, if you are feeling, oh, oh, I'm not sure I'm in the right place, then please use the WhatsApp group. All right. Your, your mates here are here to help you. Uh, it's supposed to be a safe place where you can ask for help. No one's going to be laughing at you. We've all been down this road before where we didn't even know where the right button was. I, I still do it when I'm in these other programs. I can't find the right buttons, all right? So don't feel anxious. You've got a nice group of people here who are going to help you and get you through. All right. What else have we got? We've got Diva, uh, Divani. Hope to find out about OERs in offline mode since I'm from a rural school. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, yes. OERs are really about copyright. So they can exist in all forms. Okay. They tend to be mostly digital because the way they're distributed is through the internet, but they don't have to stay digital. They can be paper based. You can print them out. Uh, you can make copies. You can. Um, uh, um, and share share them back again. Although when, once we put them in EduConnect, we're going to have to get them back to digital. All right. So keep in mind then that OERs don't are not only digital, although they are predominantly digital. All right. What else we got? We've got one Ozen two fifty feeling great. We got Sibongile. Uh, not confident yet. And I think that we need to be aware of this. Don't all feel, oh, 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 I must say nice things, all right? You've got to be true, all right? So I'm sure there are a few people out there who are not feeling exactly in control, all right? I often, when I'm starting a course, I get excited, but I'm a bit anxious because, hey, this is all new stuff, all right? So, Sibongile, uh, I hear you. I, I hear you. Uh, I see Grace is here. Ruva, I feel comfortable. She's my star from 2019. All right. So, um, Grace, welcome. It's good to see you here. All right. So, have you seen Grace's video? Okay. See if you can do this. I'm going to show off Grace's video. So, let me just, sorry, I was working on something here. Let me just go to my videos. I've got her sitting in my thing. Uh, we've got a few minutes. So, let's dig out. Here she is. Good morning. Today, our topic is water. Water is important in our life. Every day, we use water. At home, we use water for bathing. We use water for drinking. We use water for washing. We use water for watering our garden. So today, we are going to look at the forms of pouring water. So water is liquid. So this is one form of water, water exists in liquid form. Then also water, it exists in solid form. As you can see, I have some ice blocks with me. This is liquid water, which is frozen. And liquid water, and this is liquid water, which is frozen. We put it in the fridge, then it freezes. So water exists in solid form. This is ice. So water exists in solid form. Also water, it exists in gas or in vapor. Gas, you cannot see it. Water in the form of gas, you can see, not see it. So what you have to do, you boil water. The steam, with me here, yeah, I have a kettle of boiled water. As you can see, the steam coming out, yes. You have to really look, but it out. is there. We call it gas or water vapor. So we are saying water exists in three forms. These are the three forms of water vapor. Oh. And then look at her license. 
All right, I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, Grace went for Creative Commons Attribution. You're going to learn about uh, your uh, various licenses tonight. So um, Grace has already had a little think about that. And um, the, the nice idea is the, the uh, resource that you're going to make can be anything. All right. So it doesn't have to be a video. If you don't feel you want to do a video and you're more happy in MS Word or in PowerPoint, then that's cool. That's lekker. All right. But the idea now is we want you to think about teaching resources. What could you make for your colleagues around the country in this time when people are struggling for quality resources? What could you make that you could share? And we've obviously going to help you get it um, to um, into a position where uh, let me get rid of that um, into a position where uh, they can get hold of it. All right, but it's going to be linked to the curriculum and it's got to be something that you've made, or it doesn't have to be. You can find an existing OER and adapt it for Zimbabwe, or you can make your own one from scratch. All right, so that was Grace's one way back two years ago. She grabbed me. She said, hey, you're filming. Grab a, get a phone. So I grabbed a phone. She said, I want it here. I'm sitting here. Oh, right. So she basically was the, she scripted it. Um, she knew what she wanted to say. She starred in it. She organized the kitchen to grab all the bits and pieces. So, um, uh, so Grace put a lot of effort into that. I was just the photographer. I was the video man. All right. So, um, yeah, be creative. Be make something exciting, something interesting. All right. So, uh, what might you make? Okay, let's have a look. We've got uh, Leon says, good work, Grace. Um, and we've got, oh, yep, uh, Grace is getting a little bit of kudos. Excellent. That's nice. All right, so it's now, we've been now been going for 45 minutes. I'm, I'm happy that I've set the scene. Are there any other queries or questions? Let me just look at the list of people here. Uh, you can either write in the chat or you can put your hand up and I'll invite you to talk. So um, to put your hand up, uh, I'm trying to remember, how do you do that? Uh, mm. Oh, we've got people who know. Chinyepi, uh, you're first. Can you, uh, can you address us? Yeah, I'm here in Zimbabwe. I thank you very much for the workshop. I'm learning a lot. Uh, keep in mind that we're trying to model, as Lovemore said in the opening, we are trying to model what you might do with your students if you're in a remote situation where you can't meet them. So maybe you could have lockdown or something. Admittedly, they need bandwidth in order to access. But assuming that in the future, there will be more and more and more of this type of, of teaching. So we're trying to model an approach. So keep an eye on what we're doing and think, oh, how could I do that? with my learners. It might not all be possible, but it's the beginning. So thank you, Chinyepi. That's what we're trying to do. Ngonidzashi. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I mucked that up. Uh, hi, Andrew. How are you, Andrew? How are everyone? Uh, I'm excited to be part of this group. So uh, I have some few fears but now I think I'm confident and ready to create my uh, OER. Okay, uh, thank you. I just wanted to say something to the group. Excellent. All right. That's the attitude. Um, uh, it might seem a bit daunting at the moment, but we'll take you step by step through the process. So don't worry too much. Rather be excited. Uh, yeah. Um, and let's see how it goes. Sydney has said he's ready to implement and so far, he's enjoying it, all right? Mufunda thinks it's wonderful so far. All right, we've got another hand. We've got Devani, Ronald. Devani, you're mute. Sorry, you're talking, but we can't hear you. You're mute. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you're back on mute. You're off and now you're back on. Okay. Can you hear me now? There we go. Am yep. I live, Andrew? Yes, you're live. What are your impressions so far? Ronald. Okay, good. Are you... uh, uh, I was just saying, I was just about to say that. I... Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I was just about to say, uh, uh, we are definitely headed for some exciting times, you know, in, in this season where we were using digital tools in, in, in our teaching and learning. And um, I, I've actually seen it firsthand, you know, uh, digital tools actually transform lives. And, uh, you know, as a rural teacher, I've, I've, I've seen the impact that, um, that, you know, OERs might actually have, you know, in the, in the outcomes that we are actually chasing as far as our students are concerned. Because, you know, you get students learning, you know, uh, you know in, in, their, in, in the times when they are most confident and when probably they're not attached to some commitments at home. Oh. Oh, oh, that sounds promising. So let's hope, let's hope we make an impact and that we use the technology appropriately. So nice comment. Thank you. Uh, Shanghai, I see your hand is up. Thank you. Shanghai, we can't hear you. You're still muted. Uh, thank you very much, my, Mr. Andrew. I think uh, the OERs are very important during this uh, COVID era, since uh, gatherings are not allowed, and uh, the use of uh, OERs and the use of digital media plays in handy. Good. I, I, I hope so. I hope we get it right. The nice thing is the whole industry is just changing daily. So it's a very exciting place to be. And uh, the more creative people put their minds to how to use the technology appropriately, the, 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 the more models and different perspectives we're getting, which makes it very interesting. All right. Anyone else? Uh, Christina. Hello, Andrew. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for organizing a workshop. Uh, more from this workshop. Uh, what can I say is that since we are living in a in the 21st century where everything's now computerized, I think it's best for one to compete globally. I agree. Okay, so uh, I have to agree with Christina. Then one of the positives of technology, there are many negatives, but one of the positives is that Zimbabwe now is not isolated, right? You are part of an international community of educators. And uh, the fact that I'm in Johannesburg, talking to you just one example of how we can make these connections so uh yes christina I, I think you're right i see fatima has her hand up fatima <laughs> fatima uh your hands up but we can't hear anything you don't seem to be muted. All right, then I'm going to close. Uh, I think we've uh, been here more than enough time now. I will see you tomorrow at 1400 hours at two o'clock. We're going to use the same link. Uh, so it's the same place. Uh, but tomorrow you need to be ready for a test. There's going to be an online test during the, the live session. And uh, yeah, you need to know your Creative Commons licenses. So um, be ready. Be ready. Okay. Good. All right. I'm going to close the session. You may leave from now. Um, uh, we are formally closed. Uh, if you want to have a little chat, you can, but you're free to go.